page 68 simple gifts on page 67 they're giving you a key signature review of the three key signatures we've had the C major the G major and the F major but again if you just learn the scales you don't have to worry so much about it because you'll glance at the key signature and you'll see how many sharps or flats in it and you'll instantly know what scale it is and so that will tell you what black keys to play and that's so much easier than trying to okay I gotta remember all the B's are flat here I gotta do that just play it in F major you don't have to worry about it they're introducing another new symbol for you in the middle of the page called double bar lines it's two thin bar lines you see it's like a book it can be in chapters you can have different chapters of a book well in a piece of music you can have different sections of, of the music and many times not always many times the they will separate the sections with the double bar lines. That's what it means. It means you're finishing one section and going into another. It's going to be different. Is basically what it means. We're going into some new territory here. That's all. If it were a medley, you'd have the double bar lines usually between each of the songs in the medley. Because remember, a medley is a bunch of song, two or more songs stuck together as one big piece. So you'd have a double bar line between each song because each song is a different section. But you won't always see it. You could go into another section and not have the double bar line. You have to be careful. So you can't really rely on it. If you see the double bar line, you know you're going into a new section. But you could go into a new section without the double bar line. It just gets funner and funner, don't it? Well, let's talk simple gifts. We're in the key of F major. One flat. Lots of eighth notes around. I don't see any dotted rhythms here, but lots of eighth notes. So let's take this together. I'm going to start with the right hand. I'm starting here. So we're in F position again. Remember the B flats. And it's one and two and three and four. One and two and four. And then that last measure of the first line. Bring the thumb down. Just bring the thumb. Don't move the hand, just the thumb down. And then you bring the thumb back up because at the beginning of the second measure, look out because you got to cross over the thumb like so, just for one note. Relax the thumb and you'll be fine. You can do that. Yes, there are other fingerings we could use instead of that, but we need practice at this, so let's do this. For the most part, that's it for the right hand. The left hand, other than these two eighth notes at the beginning, you get the chords, the F, C, and then a B flat D. Again, the thumb comes up, and the B flat C, and the thumb again, and the thumb plays those. Put the hands together. Now it has a pickup beat, so we're coming in on beat four. Now they have an error in the music, by the way, because. In 4-4 time, every measure's got to have four counts in it. Well, if I have one beat at the beginning, I expect to see a measure somewhere else with three counts in it. Where are the first three counts? And when I look at this, every measure's got four counts in it. So where's this extra count coming from is my problem. And I'm not going to say nothing. You can tell them, but it's just my opinion. There should be a measure there somewhere, usually at the end. It could be the end of the section. Could be the end of the piece, who knows where it is, but it's, it should be a, a measure somewhere with three beats in it, and there isn't. However, let's carry on. We're still coming in on beat four. So it's four and four and one and two. measure the second line. Look out because it's one and two and those 
those are together for three and then four and one and two and three and four and hmm, good luck with that one the last measure down at the bottom it's one and two and three it's similar to this second line at the end except you got that chord on the end here so you work it out get rid of the hesitations your speed but no hesitations the beat has to be steady then we can add these slurs there's no staccatos they're just slurs it's a try and connect them as but you can't connect this because of the chord one way we do this in arrangements if you really want to connect it is you would tie the C, the eighth note C, to the whole note. And so when it comes time to play the whole note, the chord, you hold the C down, just add the F to it. That way you can connect it. That's one way, one of the ways of doing it. Otherwise, you're gonna have a separation there. Lift up, you lift up in the right hand between each slur. And connect that. Sounds like one hand played the whole thing is what we want. Then lift up. Lift up. This is all connected here in the last major the second line. You can't connect it because of the way this arrangement goes, but otherwise you'd that's the melody. The D's that's what we'd want to hear, but do the best you can. So forth. So you put in the slurs, then we add the dynamics. Though overall it's sort of a gentle piece. It's on the soft side of the middle, wherever. That's the melody. But you're not going to play the whole piece at this level. You're going to get a little louder and softer, but you've got to get to know the piece well enough that you can feel this music. You're not thinking about notes and rhythms. And you're listening to the melody, and you'll feel it getting louder and softer. Follow your feelings there. So whatever you think medium soft is, that's the melody. They keep these chords, the half notes and whole notes, Keep them way soft. See, those notes are melodies, so they got to come out. really difficult there on this last major the second line but okay do the best you can with it but you can get louder and softer it's it's up to you I, I could demonstrate one way of doing it and then you just do it the way I do it I don't want to do that I want you to discover it on your own experiment with it and come up with this on your own make it yours speed wise it says andante but I find this well andante to me is, is like a casual stroll but that's the overall feel of the piece it's just that some days I feel like strolling a little faster than so I'll play it at a slightly different speed every time I play it that's okay it's how I feel it and that's what we're after but just don't play it lickety split fast that's out of uh, inappropriate for this particular piece You'll see at the end of the second line, they put the end of the double bars. That, that would indicate the first two lines is one section, and the last two lines is another section. However, if you play the piece through, you'll find it all fits in one section. It's not really two different sections. I think what she's doing here is just giving you an example of the double bars. But I would not treat these as two separate sections. So you go ahead and learn it. I like to play it with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms and all. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'll give us three counts because we come in on beat four. Let's try it together very slowly. 
One and ready and go and. One and.